Let's see. Two, four, two. We have a legendary matchup between Khabib and Dustin Poirier. This is a fight that I'm really looking forward to. And it's been a long time coming and it's something that's kind of uh, really exciting in that it's bringing one of the, the biggest stars of UFC, thanks of course to the unnamed one, which I will not mention in this point in this video, um, versus Dustin Poirier. Now Dustin Poirier, he has been around for a while and he deserves a chance to become champion. The only problem is he's facing Khabib. Now, Khabib has been very dominant in his in his matches. But the question is, is what's going to happen? Who's going to win? For me, my pick, Dustin Poirier. First minute, round one. He's going to knock out Khabib. Now, the reasoning for my prediction might be that Khabib, I think, will try and stand on his feet at the start of the fight. Now, if I was a smart man, I'd be betting on Khabib because Khabib's, like, his, his strongest part of his game is basically taking them down to the ground and just mauling them, which is what he does. His technique is mauling. He will call it the mauling MMA technique. Um, and I think that Tony Ferguson's uh, jiu-jitsu could have been or may just be kind of like a little bit of kryptonite for Khabib's mauling MMA style. Now, Dustin Poirier, you know, while he's obviously going to be good in that area, I, I just don't know what would happen. So, you know, if you're a betting man, you put money on Khabib to take Dustin Poirier down and maul him and win. But Khabib is very confident with his ability to trade punches, to punch, to stay on his feet. And, you know, he's not really look bad, but I think that that's his probably most vulnerable position in the fight is if he's standing up, coming forward, throwing punches, Dustin Poirier, I reckon he's going to clip him. I reckon he's going to clip him and he's going to finish him, to be honest. Um, you know, I, to be honest, I really want Dustin Poirier to win. I, I'd like Khabib to win too. It doesn't. I have no uh, personal preference on on which person is going to win. You know, I'll be happy either way. You know, we, we should be both fans of both of the fighters. You know, in this lead up to the fight, there's been no drama, no trouble. You know, I would assume they're both pretty respectable to each other. And you know, it's it's not a good guy versus bad guy thing. It's just. You know, not the wrestling world, WWF wrestling. It's it's just, I think this one's a bit more for a professional, respectable matchup between the two. And I'd be happy if either guy won, but I really want Dustin Poirier to win because, A, he deserves it. B, he deserves it. C, it's, I don't know, I just... I, I'd really want him to win because I've been a fan of his for a long time. I remember when he first came onto the scene years and years ago. I was extremely impressed with him, and he'd done well, but he just didn't get past those really important fights that got him right to the top. He got almost to the top and then just fell back to the top and then fell back, and then he's climbed himself back up. You know, so that's the reason why I want him to win. Um, is, you know, he's been trying for a long time 
and he seems like a decent guy. And Khabib's future is guaranteed. Even if he loses, he still wins. Because imagine if he lost, it would set himself up with a fight with Tony Ferguson. Now, if he lost a second time, that's going to damage his, as what they refer, legacy. Um, but, you know, it, <laughs> wouldn't it be funny to see? Let's mention the unnamed one, Conor McGregor. Um, so for me, Conor McGregor is, is way, way out of the picture. You know what I mean? He, he didn't look bad against Khabib. He just got mauled. But Khabib was very confident to try and stand and punch with Conor McGregor. And while Conor McGregor, I think, is a better puncher than Dustin Poirier. Didn't, didn't Conor McGregor beat Dustin Poirier in one of his first fights? I can't remember. That was back when didn't really care much about Conor McGregor, who was Conor McGregor. But anyway, Conor McGregor did amazing things for the sport, but he also did other things for the sport. But anyway, you know, imagine Khabib versus Conor McGregor too, and Khabib balls Conor McGregor again. Um, anyway, um, but yeah, Tony Ferguson and Khabib is a matchup that we really want to see. Um, Tony Ferguson, that's a ma Tony Ver Ferguson versus Dustin Poirier is a match that. I don't know if I want to watch. Tony Ferguson is, he's the real deal. So is Dustin Poirier, so is Khabib. They're, they're all the real deal. But Khabib, I mean, Ferguson is just a machine in the way that he just keeps going and going and going. And I'd like to see how he would handle himself on the ground with Khabib. But yeah, I can't wait. It's only like a week away. I'm going to be watching it live. Maybe I could watch it live with you guys and get a reaction for the for the uh for the video that would be a lot of fun i'm gonna i might see if i can do that it's gonna be fun to to watch the video and chat with you guys as i'm watching it anyway so so yeah so we got Kibi versus Pori man it's gonna be a good fight i don't know what's gonna happen but i reckon i reckon if dustin Poirier is clever he's gonna come out with a plan Hulk smash. Hulk smash is, is the plan. Just Hulk smash. Um, it, it's like uh, Jorge Masvidal versus Ben Askren. That was Hulk smash in its finest. Uh, but like you saw Ben Askren just coming in for the takedown. And there was just, it was just like, you, you know how sometimes you just make mistakes? Like literally... I just jammed my finger in the door and and I didn't quite realise that oiling the door hinges, I noticed that the door was swinging much faster than it was before and uh, yeah, it caught my finger. Anyway, it was like one of those moments where Ben Askren's going in for the takedown and oh, hey, was, oh, he, he, he was ready for it. He just come up with that flying knee and um, took him out. But Ben Askren has been great for the sport. He talks funny when he, he's, you know, he pays people out, but he, he pays people out and, and makes fun of them in a, in a fun way. You know, he doesn't come across as like, you know, an angry person or, you know, like uh, he's, he's saying like really bad things. He's, he's fun to watch and it made Tyrone Woodley much more fun with the two of them together. Like, um, yeah, Tyrone Woodley and, and Ben Askren together. It, it just was a lot of fun. I really hope Tyrone Woodley comes back. You know, like he said when he fought, um, oh jeez, I can't remember. But when he in his last fight, when he lost his championship, it was like he was in quicksand and he just couldn't do anything. He was just, I don't know. But I really want Tyrone Woodley to come back, and I want Ben Askren to come back as well um, because they're both good for the sport together. You know, they. I don't know. I really enjoyed watching and listening to them it was fun and you know it should be a bit of fun okay so let's just talk about the last main UFC event Stipe versus Cormier man I was I was keen for this you know you know 
being the Cormier fans, you got to be a fan of both of these guys. Um, again, it's you know, it's not the John Jones Cormier thing. I don't want to know about that. Um, but you know, Cormier caught Stipe last fight, and then there's this fight. I'm watching it. I'm just going, oh jeez, Cormier is going to knock him out again, and he cracked Stipe and cracked him and cracked him and nailed him and you know and Comier's fingers was definitely getting into Stipe's eyes um you know when you're holding your hands out like that I think it's um yeah uh we'll um refer to the towel incident um you know, it's not one of Cormier's brightest uh, moments of the towel incidents. You know, also, his fingers getting in the way of Stipe's eyes. But anyway, um, Cormier was cracking Stipe. He was hitting him with some big shots. And it was definitely rattling Stipe. Um, but he stayed focused. And then, man, Stipe come out. And when I saw him hit that body punch, I was like, wow, that was good. And he did it again. And then I thought, do it again. And he did it again. And again, and again, and again, and again, and again. And Stipe just come back and just polished him off. So, you know, hats off to Stipe. Um, Cormier doesn't, like, he didn't look bad. Uh, you know, we're all still fans. He's a legend. So, you know, Cormier's time to retire is pretty much now. He didn't lose in a bad way, but... Um, if he wants to fight again, you know, I wouldn't want to see him fight John Jones for a third time. Maybe at heavyweight, but not at light heavyweight. Um, Cormier is too big now. It's It'd be too much work for him to get down to that weight. It would just, I don't know. Anyway. And UFC Fight Night 157. Sorry, just checking the numbers. Um, Wile Zhang versus Jessica Andrade. Now, let's just go back. To Joanna Joe Chechek. She was a massively dominant fighter, you know. She was good reach, good boxing, good kickboxing. She was extremely skilled. And Rose cleaned her up and cleaned her up the second time. Um and you know, that's that's great for Rose, and Rose handled herself really well, and I'm happy for her success. Um and uh, then Jessica Andras come along and no one expected her, you know, they expected Rose to box and punch and move, which she did and she looked good and, and then Jessica picked her up and dumped her on the head and then that was it. Um, so I'm not sure what Rose is going to do. You know, I think she's kind of retiring, which is fine. You know, it's these are their lives. They're not our lives to watch them get beaten up in the ring unless they want to do it. But anyway... Wheelie Zhang in her last fight with Tisa Torres, I watched that fight and it was she was on she was just on fire, like her technique, her strength, she was strong, but she was fighting someone like smaller than her. And I thought she's getting close for a world championship. And all of a sudden, UFC's in China with her as the main event. For the title. And so I was pretty excited to watch this, just to, you know, see what happens. And um, it didn't last long. Man, Wheelie Zhang come out with some nice kicks, some great elbows, some great knees, classic Mu Thai style. Clinch and knee and elbow, and it was just fast and accurate powerful perfect it was it was picture perfect what she did just elbows knees punches just she could be very dominant for a while her versus joanna joe chechek would be a very very interesting matchup um to watch i'd really enjoy watching that so Congratulations to Wei Zhang for being the first Chinese to ever win a UFC championship. And it's good for the UFC because they're breaking into the, the China market and China's huge. And I don't think I told you guys 
and if you're still listening and watching this, I actually went to China um, earlier this year and walked the Great Wall of China, you know, went to see the, you know, the Forbidden City and uh, Summer Palaces and, and, oh, the highlight, the highlight of my um, trip was uh, the Terracotta Warriors. I have this memory of um, when I was a little tacker going up to a museum and the Terracotta Warriors toured around the world and they brought them to a museum for like a month or so, uh, local to me, and I got to look at them. And, you know, I have a very, very big interest in, um, you know, history and the old things that were created by people and how magnificent they were. And going to see the Terracotta Warriors and, and seeing that apparently there's only like a small fraction that's been uncovered um, and that they're all still underground. And um, yeah, China's a huge place and it's, um, it's, it's, there's some impressive stuff. Um, you know, there's, you can, I couldn't believe how many trees were planted in China. All right, I'll stop talking about that. UFC. So this weekend, Join me to live stream UFC 242, Khabib versus Poirier. Um, yeah, I want to see if I can live stream myself watching the video and uh, we can maybe watch it together. 